Dalnick, and I'm the Community Literacy Program Manager at Literacy Works. It has been my great pleasure to work with and support volunteer tutors. Literacy Works and adult education in general could not be here without volunteers. And this award aims to celebrate the incredible impact adult literacy volunteers make in our community. This award was inspired by Charlene Johnson. She was a 2014 Literacy Works Inspiration Awardee. Charlene's desire to learn and apply what she learned was unmatched. She was pushed out of school at an early age and picked up jobs babysitting or working with children. When she read with them, her own literacy skills strengthened. Her work at Blue Gargoyle Family Services on Chicago's South Side with young children and their parents allowed her to serve as a role model. She eventually pursued her GED and passed. While Charlene is no longer with us, she had dreams of pursuing a college degree. In her own words, Charlene shared, my dream is to always help people. For all other people who can relate to my situation, keep trying. Don't give up on yourself. You can make it. I'm the living proof. And now it's my great honor to present this year's Charlene Johns Johnson Inspiration Award to Kedis Kasahun Lanum from Prairie State College in Chicago Heights, Illinois. A big congratulations to Kedist. Coming up next, you'll get the opportunity to get to know our honoree a little more as we ask her about her experience with adult education. I thought maybe we could start just by having you introduce yourself and tell us something about yourself. Sure, so my name is Kedis um, Kasahun and then Lanham. I have two last names. Um, Lanham is my la married name. I have been, I guess, um, I, I'm just recently moved to the area uh, around Prairie State, but I am originally, I um, have lived, grew up in, in Chicago, so I've been to Chicago public schools and, and whatnot, um, and I am, um, I guess for, you know, my day, day job, um, full-time, I work um, for a software company. And I manage their training and development program for our global um, hires, employees globally for anything from um, consulting skills to training them on whatever they're going to work on. <laughs> um, and so we just do like really hot, big scale like programs for mm -hmm. um, for different teams. And I've always enjoyed the learning space, but I don't I didn't get enough of that. So I I I thought I'd volunteer with adult literacy um, program at Prairie State. And um, that's kind of how I started in this role uh, volunteering. I think I started in February. Um, mm -hmm. So it was also a really great way to get to know people. Um, yeah, and I don't know what else I could say about myself. Yeah, um, that, that's a yeah. <laughs> how, is this your first time being a tutor? No, I have tutored probably my whole life at some point. Um, I think for me, it started when I was working full time in 20, 2009 or something like that. So I, I worked with some version of a tutoring program, whether it was um, college or, you know, students or primarily through different organizations in, in Chicago. So I, I have done group tutoring, one on one tutoring, some kind of mentoring um, at different like, you know, so many different organizations. So hard to name a few, but yeah. Cool um and um why so you talked a little about why you wanted to become a tutor but do you want to say a little more about that like why you're so interested in tutoring yeah so for me it's it's just that it comes naturally I think I, I love you know working with others and getting them to I guess see their you know full potential and um and just developing those skills that honestly you can't get in a day-to-day -day classroom like formal setting and I try to use most people's like natural setting to help with learning because I and you don't I just did you know at least for grammar school high school college that's very like you know you have a, a, a classroom that you're graded there's a lot of pressure so I always wanted to work outside of that in terms of just working with people one-on-one -on -one and helping them to get to where they need to be mm -hmm. that's a lovely thing about adult education too yeah. you can kind of work outside of that usual yeah system 
exactly yeah. and it's very natural it's like you know something I would do for someone that I know if they said hey I'm studying for such and such can you help me yeah sure let's meet at Starbucks let's talk about it like it's very informal and that's what I like the best about it <laughs> yeah yeah I, I know what you mean um and um so you're you're volunteering at Prairie State and can you tell us a little about that program like um Sure, yeah, I'll tell you what I know, program. but I don't want to, you know, leave out. Just tell me what you know. <laughs> so um, Prairie State has an adult literacy program. I mean, they have a whole department with a lot of, you know, English as a second language and other um, classes that they run. So I know that much. Um, I actually found, about, found out about their program through a family member. Um, they knew that I enjoyed you know, tutoring. I also wanted to work with adult learners. That was very specific. Like I, I want, and I'm, you know, hopefully in some future, in the future, I could do this more, you know, as a, a like a, not, a, I would say full-time job, but at least something, a career move for me as well in terms of, Hey, let me just see what's out there. I want to see if, if, if there's something that I could do on top of what I'm doing full-time. So what I learned about Prairie State in the process is actually went on their website and just read everything they had for adult literacy program. But this particular program, it was very interesting because it's again it seemed like it was this um free space for people to come in and whether they were learning English as, as a second you know language or they were you know upskilling in math or reading or English for different reasons um you know it didn't have to be someone that didn't speak English as their native language it could be someone that speaks it as their native language but they just needed to you know, do better in some area. Like, I just thought that was interesting. So that was, that's one of the reasons I applied to program. So what I know about per is that they, they serve adults in various age groups that are adults um, and, and different aspects of life, like mothers coming back to work or, you know, people coming back from different um, stages in their lives, as well as um, people that are just coming to the U.S. and learning language, the English language. Cool. Great. And, um, you're running a, a conversation circle. Is that right? Yeah, it's a conversation group. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I kind of lucked up, but at the same time, I remember um, when I signed up, I said, listen, you could put me in it in like math and computer. And I'm like, Lizzie, I'm work great in groups. I could work one on one. Like you just put me where you need me. Um, and when she said English is at ESL conversation group, I first of all, gosh, I'm like, I didn't put English <laughs> as an area because not that I, I, I'm not an English teacher. I'm, I never taught it in a formal sense. I didn't know how proper I had to be in the way that, you know, so um, I asked a lot of questions. So it is, you know, for English as a group, it's like, well, she's like, it's really informal. It's just conversation. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. And it's just, you know, I got some more content around it um, from Keisha and she, she referenced, um, actually some great, some great materials around the, the theory, the, the basis of how, the learning would go using it in their natural environment. And I was like, this is perfect. Like I could do this because <laughs> this is what I do normally uh, with any anyone anyway. So uh, that I've worked with in, in a learning setting. And so, um, yeah, it came pretty natural. And they had, you know, a lot of resources, but honestly, it was, it was just, uh, it was just a great opportunity for the group class. So initially I think 12 people signed up. I don't think they've done it before. Um, first class, I think I had something like seven or eight people, but because they're adults are also working full time and I'm only available for a particular time slot, like on Wednesdays, actually this time slot, don't worry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is probably Wednesdays from 6.30 to 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, would be the normal class time. And it was supposed to be just for four weeks. Um, and after the first class, I, you know, I got a sense of why people were really there. You know, are they here to... Um, you know, really when you're working with adults, it's, it's important to, for them to also, you know, understand like what's in it for them. Right. Um, and so I, I just talked to everyone and asked them, what is it that they were looking for? And, and that helped me kind of organize how I would run the group class. Um, and most of them already taking classes there to some kind, you know, English class. I'm like, okay, well, we're, you know, we don't necessarily need to repeat what you're doing in the other class which is an opportunity for you guys to practice and get better in in a safe space so that's mm -hmm. how the class went about so we went from um as the classes went on I had five five students that consistently stuck with a regular schedule and um four weeks turned into eight weeks I think <laughs> pretty quickly um and you know it I didn't I honestly because I haven't taught in this setting I didn't know how it was going to go but I felt like just 
because it was a, a safe space space to work in and and learn from each other it you know a lot of people really like that style of learning mm-hmm. yeah and and what kinds of things have you talked about in the group yeah it's really whatever they want to talk about I never have a uh like a, a, I have an idea of how I want to run a workshop, but like, again, so I don't teach, my, I don't consider myself a teacher, I'm more like a, a learning, I'm an instructor, I'm more, mm-hmm. I'd like to facilitate a facilitator. Learning. That so, is very adult education. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, cool. Yeah. So, you know, if someone comes in and they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to work on my pronunciation or someone's not talking because they're too shy. But I, but I say like, okay, what, you know, what, like food, generally the, the easy topics are always something around food um you know something around like things we do everyone does no matter where they're from like so it didn't you know but and, and we also use it as an opportunity to learn from each other because everybody was from the same place um and it was just basically yeah tell me about your you know whatever favorite food like how do you make it and just talk through it oh I like that too and then it just becomes a conversation but then once we got like more acquainted with each other um at least the, even the classmates they didn't know each other prior to the class at least not all of them um we really got to things that they cared about, like conversations that happen at work, um, you know, it's conversations that happen in different settings, whether it's the car mechanic or, um, you know, ordering food when they're at work and someone is there, if work, they work at a restaurant, how to take orders. And again, just them practicing with each other. So I would have people practice this exact scenario they ran into that earlier that day that they were stuck on. Um, yeah, so that's a kind of an example. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, it changed every day and really it was student led. I, I just kind of facilitated the conversation and put some, you know, structure around, um, our key takeaways. Mm-hmm. That's great. And what do you think this time around tutoring, what's something that you learned in this process that you didn't know before? Um, it's interesting. So I'm, I'm, English is actually not my first language. I learned it very young. Um, my parents are originally from Ethiopia. I was born there, moved around, learned a lot of different languages. But um, my mom actually chuckled when I told her that I'm going to teach English as a second language. She's like, you don't even have English as a first language. <laughs> and, you know, we had a little funny conversation, but I, she was like, but, I, but it's glad that you're doing that because it's something that you can relate to. So I learned a lot about, I guess, through my own experiences and seeing family around me, some of the things that I was already doing naturally that really was relatable for people in the classroom. Um, you know, whether it was like, yeah, I had to take this phone call for for so-and-so or so, you know, and I really learned that no matter where people come from, <laughs> there's always something to talk about when it comes to learning, right? Especially a new language um, from different parts of the country, world, whatever, even from what within within the same country. So, um, and even, and also it doesn't have to be perfect, like that perfection, yeah. but confidence building was another thing. Like, yes, your literature book may have said it this way, or your English class may have said it this way, but honestly, if you're at work and someone's taking an order, they could care less if you're using literature book, like English, just, yeah, just builds your confidence by. So I, I don't know, I guess what I learned is, um, it's, you know, learning is more of a behavior change than really like the the tangible things that I you we think of when we look at our school vocabulary you know phonetics not that that's all important stuff it's just that you know in application on real day-to-day application um it doesn't have to be perfect and it's okay if you you know <laughs> grammatically yeah. something doesn't sound perfect or you have a heavy accent as long as somebody understands what you're saying and you're patient with yourself so you know it's all those are all things I learned over my life so I, I think just being able to bring that back you know in a classroom that was probably what I learned about myself I guess I don't know if you were, if the question was for me or yeah that was the one thing that I think was a key takeaway for me was um just know use what you already know don't don't you know push yourself beyond um, to and make yourself so uncomfortable that you don't try harder, you know? Yeah, totally. And I'm sure you're like a, a great role model too, since you've, you've been through it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but as, yeah. I think the difference is I came as a kid, right? And yeah, when you're six, it is you're different. Seven, like you learn so much stuff when you're an adult and you have roles and responsibilities and family to take care of, like, 
not knowing English or not speaking it as well as everyone else is, it's like you have the burden of everything plus, plus this thing that you can't, you don't have time to practice, Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know? So, um, and when you're at home too, like if you have a native language at home, people are not going to go out of their way to speak to you in English. They're going to speak to you in whatever is their comfort language, right? And or a pattern of speech. And so it, it was just that kind of like making sure there's a, a a space for learning right that yeah. allows that allows it to happen naturally and so we really like I one of the things I think one you know one of the students actually brought in a sheet of paper where it just had all these different activities that would happen and how they would converse with someone on like at a bus stop at the office at this at that and so you know we it was just like, people were motivated to help each other, right? Um, mm-hmm. And actually like, make copies for everybody in the classroom and everything. <laughs> so just using everybody's expertise and skill. And also like, maybe this person speaks at like a very fluent level, but they're just, they think they can't speak it because it's yeah. not the first language. Um, and then there's other people that didn't even want to try, right? Because they weren't sure how it was. But the, the point is, you know, um, I think I, at least I can't speak for others, but I could say that um, what I saw happen in the classroom is people saw that they knew more than they thought they knew. Yeah. Yeah. I think so much of learning is about feelings and feeling yeah. like you have, you know, something and you have something to give. And that is like the power of a teacher to help, like just Absolutely. help people like feel confident that they do know. Like they yeah. do know something, they do have something to offer. Absolutely. Um, yeah. um, it's kind of funny. So I, one thing I did mention about, so I have had, I've been working in, in some corporate setting one for the last 20 years, but I did take a break for four years to go pursue teaching as a career. And I taught in, as a substitute teacher for two years on the West side of a charter school, mm-hmm. or, well, at that and then a mentoring program. So I did work in, in and I, and one thing I remember even seeing And I know adult learners are obviously different, but it's that like aha moment for people in a classroom. And it's just like you give a relatable (laughs) example and it's it's that, oh, my gosh, I just like pumped this person up 10 times more than they felt when they walked in because they answered X, Y, and Z, right? Because I, you know, and I taught math and math is not easy for a lot of people. Yeah. Doing algebra and I, I love math. I don't mind teaching it, but I there's not a whole lot of conversation that happens for most people around that. So it's not my favorite because it's so like, um, although I've gotten better at teaching algebra in terms of, ma- of real life, I would say. That is like, like, a, a treasure. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's yeah. always like figuring out the variable. Let's figure out what you don't know <laughs> and work yeah. our way backwards from what we do know. So I, you know, it's just making it relatable. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I think you're right. It's that aha moment that like, empowering people to like yeah it's not that difficult if you just try and yeah try again and like it's okay and then try again if you need to <laughs> and so you get it right yeah cool yeah well um I would say you gave me a lot of good stuff to work with but um it's okay if you don't have one of these but do you have like um um, a favorite memory or like some an experience that you had um in your constant in your conversation group so far something you can think about oh, there's so many um yeah but I mean, when I wrote that down I was now. like I don't know what I would say if you somebody know, asked me that then. you know the thing is um so we're go, um, we're starting back in the summer I hope the same people come back or even and they bring more people with them because I'm really my favorite moments are always when um, people bring someone else with them or they meet someone new and then they bring them along their journey, like in learning, whatever that is, like whatever, however that looks. And I saw a lot of that in the classrooms. There's so many different moments of that. Um, and of course, the learning never ends. It's not really a class like that has a true beginning and an end. Like when I'm doing a final presentation, it's just conversation, you know what I mean? Or a final test or anything like that. But my favorite moments really revolved around, um, oh, like how do you hear that? oh, that's, that's, you know, whatever, or somebody that I like, didn't even hear talk for, like, at least, you know, the three, four, first three classes, like, ch- chittering, chatting away in English, or trying in English, like, and, and, and 
on their own with someone else like it was it was just those are like the little moments and yeah. almost everyone spoke English almost almost at a time but I did like hey listen like help each other out so it's group learning <laughs> it's just the goal is let's try to learn English so I didn't have any crazy rules about like yeah you could only speak in English but it but I did encourage them to call each other out if they're not speaking English so that was um yes yeah, so there's a lot of fun moments around that and you know it's like say it in English oh, okay. mm-hmm. like it's this is like little you know memories of of that moment um and again you know it, it's um uh, I don't know, maybe a lot of teachers feel this way or instructors, but you, anytime you hear someone in the room teaching something back to someone else, you're yeah. like, they, they're trying or it's awesome. So, you know, yeah, so those little moments. I have a whole booklet that I read because I was just so nervous about like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do it. Like, so there's this whole, and I, and I remember, so you said ABE, I'm like, I know what that acronym is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then you're in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm sure it's somewhere around here because I kind of pick it up in between my phone calls sometimes when <laughs> um and and just because it has like a lot of tips and tricks for like, hey, if you you know if you're a tutor and this is some you know something you could do, like this is how it's just a how yeah. to interact, right? And it's a kind of a nice refresher for me because yes, I work with adults for work, but it's like so different when you're doing and you know, um my I have two toddlers. Um, oh, I work a full time job. You're tutoring. Yes, you're and tutoring. so this is obviously star. like a very <laughs> I'm on a tight time. So what I what I was doing because I can't necessarily log in a lot of times when I'm at work. I would just have the booklet next to me. If I had a pamphlet, then I could like you know I'm not on camera. <laughs> I could I could just review some stuff or I'll read it on the way to class just to make sure. Okay, yeah, I. Not that it was a like a handbook, but it's just I wanted to make sure there wasn't something that I was missing. Um, yeah. And I've had a lot of careers, and so every <laughs> at least three. Um, but the second career after teaching, I realized I didn't want to teach children, which I love children because you know I get to teach them full time at home now. <laughs> um, but um, is um, I I I took I went to school for a couple of years for occupational therapy and what I loved about occupational therapy was the science around taking education um framework the psychology framework and then like the human body like for, and just kind of and then like how it all correlates with the environment it's in so I just like ate it all up everybody was like oh my gosh this is, this is my stuff this is I loved it right I didn't finish the program but I thought I think also through that journey with with me taking I realized that I I want to be a learning facilitator more so than occupational, an occupational therapist in a healthcare setting which I mm-hmm. you know I, I wanted um I enjoyed the program, but when I took a break is when I realized I'm actually, what I love the most was the adult learning component of it and how it breaks down the science from these different um, frameworks of, of thinking. Cause not everyone, at least at that time when I was teaching was taking psychology and human, how humans receive information and process it over a lifespan, right? Like mm-hmm. when you're a 20 year old, a 30 year old, a 40 year old, a 50 year old, just all of the, and how it all plays in your your consumption of knowledge and because that's really occupational therapy it's a different form of teaching the person yeah. to use their body again or whatever so I I was able to I want to incorporate more of that I do that at, at my job believe it or not actually in my corporate space I actually still incorporate a lot of what I learn in occupational therapy at least from that first year because like I could run groups I could run stuff and I got really good at it and then um, I just manage a team I teach other people how to do it and they teach other people so we do like a train the trainer mm-hmm. model but um here it's like oh, okay cool I can just do whatever like comes to mm-hmm. mind I love it like it's, it's well not- you would be a great adult education teacher I mean that's what you're doing but yeah I can tell I, <laughs> I would love to do this full time if I could oh well <laughs> keep it in yeah. mind we're yeah, it'll be always looking for job. great teachers. <laughs>